What's up, YouTube? It's your boy Steve from Printer Gang Investments back with another video. And today is the day after NVIDIA earnings. We survived, kind of, sort of. And I made a lot of power moves today, man. So we're going to talk about it. So, first thing happened this morning nvidia was down after hours yesterday then it was up this morning and it actually went up a little bit today i think palantir was up to like 62 or 63 today because they beat earnings if any of you guys are new to the stock market this happens sometimes and nvidia actually set a i ain't gonna say a new precedent but i haven't seen it a lot they beat on the earnings number the eps the revenue and the guidance number but they like Michael Jordan now. Everybody expects him to win. So it's like some new shit where it's like if they beat guidance by not by what the street thinks enough, they'll go flat or tank the stock. So they went flat today. So what I did, since Palantir kind of follows NVIDIA as an AI trade with AI sentiment and we at the highs, I went on and took some gains and a few small losses. I'm going to tell you all about it. So I had two of these calls right here. These $80 June 2025 calls. They was up like 50% at one point. I sold one of them. I kept the other one. Uh, my March call, it was risky as hell. I was probably up 15% on that. I took that in my little YOLO calls for December 27th. I sold one at a small profit. I think I bought it for 30, sold it for 36. And the other two I went on and took that L. I think they got me for like 48%. So at that point, we have actually made Palantir a completely risk-free trade. I have made so much money with call options that all of the shares, the initials paid for, and all of the options I got are paid for. So we gonna let these ride out. Uh, if they really knock these two to steal red down, I might roll them into 2026. But we gonna let these ride out for the next year and try and do it all over again. So, as far as our next trades, y'all can see SoFi is starting to take off people. SoFi, I think it guys has like 1545 today. I think we still close at around 15. I'm up 64% on these calls. I got some SoFi calls and other accounts and I'm probably up two, 300% on. So I'm starting to make money off SoFi. Things are looking good. Anthony Noto should handle the execution. So that might be a good play. I might be adding more money into it because as much as I love Palantir, Palantir is a mid cap and this is a small cap rally. So I'm not gonna necessarily pull no money out of Palantir. But from here, SoFi might have a better chance to double than Palantir would have to double here. Like I could see SoFi going to 30 before I can see Palantir going to 120 type of situation. So we might be adding more to the SoFi. As y'all can see, I've been buying more of this free Tesla, more free SPY. You know what I'm saying? That's what we do with all these options games. We take risks, we take risks, but we eventually bring it back home in the stock. So we're going to be building up this SPY position, this Tesla position. Um, we are up to 55.6 free shares of Palantir strictly from trading options. Uh, didn't have to put any money in to get those. I'm proud of that. And now for my new plays, these are riskier plays right here. I might lose on a lot of them. We're in discovery mode. So I got Oklo here. Y'all heard I've been talking about nuclear energy. It's just $5 worth. But what I'm about to do is what's going on in the market right now. It's a lot of stocks that's going, a lot of small caps. But from where I'm playing and the kind of money I want to put on the line, it might be too risky to kind of buy some calls on some of these stocks right now unless I get some gains first. Like y'all saw with IonQ, I think I made 137%. I took that, hopped back in, they shook me out, knocked me down 50% on the second call I bought. Then it kept riding. So with stocks like that, until I get some more buying power, I'm probably gonna start playing with the shares. So I got the Ion Q here. I got Oaklo here. I got five dollars in each of those. And as y'all can see, see how volatile they are. They're moving almost like call ops. I'm up eight percent and ten percent, even though it's just five dollars. That's just a starter position. Um, y'all see the micro strategy Mara situation here. So I bought this one because I saw what was going on with Bitcoin when I was deep into my Palantir buying era. But at the time, we only had money to load up on Palantir. Like I saw the Bitcoin, I saw Tesla um, at the time. 
a few others that I might be getting in soon too. We're gonna talk about that later in this video. So what I want to see is there any juice left in the squeeze. So I started a little very small position in the Mar Micro strategy. That's gonna give me sentiment because the way I look at it right now, either Bitcoin and these small caps keep rallying or this poor strike comes back we got these russia ukraine tensions and more jobs data comes out from during the biden era and that can knock the market down next year so not only am i trying to make some money on this position i'm gonna be looking at this position for sentiment on the market itself now look up here geo the second round might be starting i know if y'all seen this channel we made like 150 percent off geo already and i thought we was gonna take that l on the runner but the runner went green again. So we're going to see what happened. I think GPO, GEO was up. Let's see what was GEO up today. Let's type it in. Let's type it in. Let's see what GEO was up today. Yeah, GEO was up another 3% today. So we're going to see what happens with that. Um, I started an ARM position. I like ARM. I, once again, it's another stock. I didn't have enough money to load up on at the time. We was too busy buying Palantir, but I liked ARM at like 70 and 50 and 60. I didn't buy it. I want to buy it at IPO. But if I had the money, I probably would have hopped in 60, 70, $80 range. So we're going to do what we need to do on ARM. And our advanced auto parts call is still struggling. We're going to be watching that all year, people. We're going to see if that take off. That's just one of those ones in the cut. We're going to see what happens with that. So that's where I'm at it with right now. We're down like 200 bucks a day. Because I took gains this morning, but the remaining calls I had, the market did sell off a little bit. So that's why you see that red there. And I got caught up in a Mara call today. I tried to get the Mara call, but then um, what happened? I wanted to test the waters on the Mara call. I think I had like 200 bucks on it. But then I think uh, they did the share offering on me. Oh, my God. I know that from my short squeeze days, from my GameStop AMC days, the share offering the worst. So they knocked it down, and that just showed me the volatility of these Bitcoin-related calls. So that's why you see me with the $100 position instead of $200 position. I think I took like a small loss, like 25%. I put like 50% of the shares and just bought a $100 call instead. I didn't want to be in that, so we'll see how that plays out. But the other two plays I'm looking at, I don't know if they're done. I don't think they're done because I was looking at both of these around the $8 range. And once again, we was loaded up on Palantir. So I'm also looking at Robin Hood and Hems. I wanted to buy both of those at 8 Both of them have taken off, but they're getting analyst upgrades. They're both executing properly. So I'm going to see. I'm going to get on my chart, see is there a place where I could maybe get in, look for a pullback, see what I could do. Because I don't want to buy no more stuff at the highs like this Mara because y'all see how this situation turned out these things are volatile this call right here i was up like 35 percent on this earlier today and then they did a share offering and as y'all can see i'm down so we're gonna see how that's gonna go but let's look at some charts real quick let's look at some charts man gotta start with palantir today so on palantir today we did pretty good we did pretty good man we still hone this same area. I'm very impressed with how we hone these 60s. I'm loving how we hone these 60s. So we're going to see if this continues to hold. Fair value gap still between 58 and 56. That's where I, I might buy there if that happens. I might buy there. I might give it a shot. It depends on what the macro is doing to get it down there. Is it just a regular sell-off? We'll see. And after that, we got 52 and just this whole range from when we first moved during earnings that would be like a low the boat opportunity so we're up here um nvidia was flat today let's see sofa was up today ionq was up 13 percent today oklo was up 20 percent today celsius modon that's a uh excuse me that is a uh air conditioning play on ai Mar was up 6.8 percent today. Um, I heard that uh, bank stocks did good. Home Depot did good today. So what's going on in the market right now? People are choosing stocks based on Trump coming into office. That's why y'all see me with GEO. They say people are going Home Depot, going Goldman Sachs. We got so far it's a smaller bank, so it might not be the same. But we'll see if we can get our money over there. Um, as far as sentiment right now, I want to see if we're going to have these Santa Claus rally. That's why if y'all look at my account, 
we sitting on a lot of buying power right now, like 4,200. Because I want to see if the Santa Claus rally going to play out. And I want to see, do I need to buy some puts? So that's why I'm keeping a lot of money in cash. I'm going to be observing the sentiment. I'm going to be seeing what's going on out of here. Because we might end up buying some puts early in the next year. I hope not, because I'd love to see my calls keep going. But, you know, in order to grow your money in these markets, you got to be prepared for whatever. But, you know. That's enough for this video. You know, I'm telling y'all what was going on today. It was a lot of a, a lot of updates today. We're gonna see how a lot of these new trades play out. You know what I'm saying? And it's your boy Steve from Printer Gang Investments. I'm gonna see y'all in the next video. You know it.